the older techniques of rhinoplasty over 10, 15 years ago were called reduction rhinoplasty. And the whole concept was, oh, my nose is big, we're going to reduce it or remove cartilage and make it thinner if it was too wide. That actually caused a lot of the problems of why we were doing revision rhinoplasty, because over time, the nose would then collapse, wouldn't be supported, the nose would twist. And if you took a photo of the nose year after, it looked great. And he took a photo of the nose five years later, it looked like a completely different nose. It would bend, it would twist, it, it was turned up. And most of the people that come in um, all have the same issues of what, are the, what do you fear the most? Well, I fear that I'm gonna have a turned up nose or a scooped out nose or a pinched nose or the, or the ALA margins are gonna be retracted up. Um, those are all the same things. The Beverly Hills High School girl will sit in a chair and they'll, have the re they'll repeat the same things that scare them in terms of having their nose done. So, so that, a lot of those problems were a result of the, the uh, reduction rhinoplasty principles that were taught, taught years ago. And we've evolved since then in teaching a more structured rhinoplasty approach and identifying the problems in the nose that are structurally deficient. And actually, as you treat that, the, the result of the structure rhinoplasty technique actually produces a much more natural result just by the technique itself. So for example, if, if the nose is already pinched in or there's a weakness here or the tip is dropped due to weakness in here, when you strengthen those weaknesses, the nose actually forms to a better shape and a better form, and, and it also stays there over time. So the structure, those are structure rhinoplasties. They're both in what's called open rhinoplasty approach and closed structure rhinoplasty approach. There are some doctors that only do an open technique where they make an incision across the calumella. I can do them both open or closed. I do most of mine closed. And um, I, I think that uh, any doctor that does rhinoplasty should be able to perform both in a, a closed rhinoplasty and an open rhinoplasty because some of those techniques are very important in both cases. One of the problems with also the open technique is that in selective cases, I believe that, that you can't hide the scar that's necessary to do an open technique. Uh, in most cases you can, but in selective cases you can't. And in primary rhinoplasty, uh, many, of the, many of these patients are really treated very well through a closed approach and, and have a much more natural result. And, um, and I believe that, that in those patients that do not want to scar across their calumella, I would say the majority of the primary rhinoplasties can very well be done through a, through a uh, closed approach rather than an open approach.